All right, guys, back with a brand new edition. For those of you guys that did not actually see the first part of this video, I just did a January release. So I'm catching up for the past couple months. I got out of my slump when I had that GameStop mishap. So appreciate everybody giving me some love uh, and trying to get myself back on track. Uh, really appreciate everybody sticking with me as I get my confidence back. So quick overview, $857,000 in the portfolio. A lot of material talking about in the first video, ETFs and how that's continued to be a large trend. Now we're looking mostly at covered call or collared ETFs that have the protected puts built into them. Uh, you'll see in January and February timeframe in these videos, I did still have QILD and Jeppy. That is no longer the case. So make sure you check in the March timeframe where some of us in the Theta gang are really trying to push into NUSI, which is a collared ETF, not a covered call ETF like QILD and Jeppy. But to each their own, right? I'm just gonna use Nusi as a bank account, yada, yada, yada. Talked about in the first video, $21,500 looking forward, 12 months, 3.81% yield on cost, 3.17% dividend yield at the moment. This does include, uh, sorry, Palantir. This does include Wish. This does include Google. This does include Amazon. So you do have those high dividend yielding positions partly offset by the zero yielding positions like your Amazons, your growth companies that are still in their infancy. Now, let's just get to the important part. The reason why you guys are here, if you guys are interested in hearing a little bit more about what's been going on, how the portfolio is changing, yada, 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 feel free to check out the January video and hope you guys enjoy that. But so YouTube income for the month of February, $609.74. Can't complain with that one. Shopify, $676. That was pretty good. I think that might've been my best, our best month yet, uh, but we did take some of that money and reinvest it back into the business. You'll see more of that in the March timeframe. Affiliate income, continuing to increase about $1,200. Was able to do about two videos or so uh, in the month of February. You'll see that continue to increase in the month of March. And options income, we were eliminating more risk coming out of what happened in January with GameStop. So I took more risk off the table and that meant closing out some positions um, that I just didn't want to be involved in anymore and uh, just getting myself back to ground zero. It was worth losing $300 to just get myself back to ground zero, starting afresh, changing the strategy a little bit uh, that I deviated from. It's not very much different from what I started at and I was doing very successfully but I deviated from pretty drastically going into December and going into January, you guys can see the numbers, $28,000 in December in terms of um, income there. And then January, we just wiped it all out, if not more, um, with the whole GameStop mishap. So February, just going to return back to slow and steady wins the race, try to get my one to 2% a month. I'm not gonna force anything. Um, you know, I'm only gonna sell positions that I would wanna buy in the long term. So something like TQQQ or, or something of the like uh, going forward um, and, and trying to truly just get involved in companies that I would want to hold on a major pullback, not really going to try to go out to the meme stocks where the premium is at uh, and get away from juicy premium syndrome. So overall dividend income, only $1,000. That's fine. Generally speaking, the second month of every quarter is my lowest paying dividend month of the quarter. So that means your Februarys, your Mays, your you know yada, yada. Uh, generally speaking. So the fact that we got it over a thousand is good. Hoping we continue above a thousand. Hopefully we never go below a thousand again. Um, and we can continue to, to aim towards getting every month up above $2,000 a month. Cause then obviously that means we're obviously looking at about $24,000 a year in dividend income. So, uh, let's just hop right into specifically, you know, what stocks paid us total income, I guess, from passive income sources or, or whatever you want to say, side hustle income sources, what have you, inclusive of that options income negative that we have there, 3,200 bucks. Can't complain with that at all. We got our final payment from Avvi. Uh, I unfortunately did sell Avvi. Um, actually, it was a covered call that eventually got called away. So I did lose some opportunity costs associated with that, but I think I took that money and put it into something else. Um, and that's obviously cranking away and making money on its own. If Caterpillar, which made $104 for us there, the 100 shares of Caterpillar. Jeppy, I sold out of a partial position there. Um, got us $158. JP Morgan, the last JP Morgan as well, $91.67. I did also get JP Morgan called away in either February or March. Um, and that money went partially into investing more into Wells Fargo and then partially into Nusi, which we can touch on in a later video. 
Realty income still cranking out over $101, in this case, $102 every month. Can't complain with that. It's a $30,000 position cranking out uh, 100 bucks a month. I don't have to do any sort of sweat equity or anything associated with that. So uh, my real estate exposure in that respect and having a good time with it. $73 here in Stag Industrial, looking pretty good. My last AT&T, uh, $213. So you guys might say, you got rid of AT&T, man, are you crazy? Um, I guess I am, but I, I think that AT&T, while I like the streaming aspect of things, uh, I do think they'll see a lot of headwinds where there are a lot of their revenue is coming from right now when Star League truly comes and, and starts to take away a big piece of market share. So same thing with Verizon. I sold out of Verizon. You guys might get upset with me on that one as well. But I just think that there's going to be a lot of change coming to the industry with Starlink and a lot of other companies coming out providing satellite rather than specifically fiber optics or dial up or God knows what else, hard connect sources. You know, I just think that global Wi-Fi is just going to end up being a thing here in, in the near term. So um, I just know what Verizon's doing. I know what AT&T is doing. I use Verizon on a day-to-day -day basis as who my cell phone provider services. But at the same time, I just know it's ripe for regime change. And, um, you know, the industry as a whole just needs to, to get a waking up. I think that a lot of people have just been sitting and just collecting those dividends and not innovating, to pushing things forward. So Starlink, I think, is going to come and really hit those industries really hard. That's why I think some of those share prices have been hit pretty hard. Uh, Jeppy also in the Roth, um, actually sold that as one as well. Moved it into Nusi. You'll see that kind of going forward. Mainstream Capital, $32.72 from that one. Verizon, another lost one that we have no longer in the portfolio, $24.95 there. Uh, that one will be removed going forward. We did have a payment here in Nusi um, in the portfolio as well. So, uh, so I can't complain associated with that one. This one uh, is the M1 Finance account. That's right. This is the M1 Finance account, $71.61 there. Uh, reinvested back into some uh, of TQQ or QQQ or uh, VTI. I'm not sure for February where exactly it put the money into. Uh, we have O, Realty Income, $1.31. It's a small one. I'm just going to assume it was $1.31. Uh, it was a small payment here. I'll have to double check it uh, kind of going forward. Clorox is the same. I know for a fact that Clorox is about $10.49. I'll have to double check that one as well. Uh, but I did not get around to that. Uh, Abvi as well. Uh, this one is in a small account where it's legitimately just Abvi and some small positions like Procter & Gamble and General Mills. So um, overall, these things are like 25 bucks or so. I'll need to double check those kind of going forward, um, especially uh, to double check that since they've reinvested a good bit, I guarantee that these, uh, these positions are yielding a little bit more than uh, what they have been in the past. So uh, I need to go ahead and, and double check those ones kind of going forward. Cardone Capital, 50 bucks as always, uh, kind of coming in there, uh, hoping that eventually we'll start to see an increase in the cash flow coming from those things going forward. But for now, I'm just going to assume 50 bucks because that's kind of what they have mentioned to us. And very little, if not anything, from the personal savings account, all that money back into the portfolio. So, um, that's it for February, man. It's looking pretty good, looking pretty healthy in that respect. $3,200 in terms of total monthly income, looking specifically at the year-over-year -year increases. So last year we had $831 coming in the month of February. This month we have almost $1,050. It's an increase of about 26%. Not bad. Uh, you can see that the, the red here is 2020. This yellow is 2021. So hopefully we're able to consistently keep over this thousand dollar mark. That would be awesome. That would make me really happy. Uh, seeing this red little thing here only at 25%, that makes me a little less happy. We saw this big spike up here in January. That was awesome, 148% in terms of year over year growth going from 754 in January 2020 to $1,800 in January 2021. So hopefully we can continue to get close to 50 to 100% months, but of course you're always gonna have your down months and February just happens to be mine. So um, hopefully going forward, look forward to sharing with you guys in the next video what happened in March. Looks like we're up about 130%. And I guess I just gave you a little preview if you guys have been lucky to stick it around long enough. 
we made about $3,200 in dividends in March. So hopefully you guys watch that video and I'll see you guys on the next one. Cheers.